Welcome back to my channel and in this video I'm going to cover airbrush tips and tricks. As you can see this is a collection of my airbrushes. I actually have about 50 plus airbrushes and a lot of them off to the side but these are my main ones that I mostly use. Um, I'm hoping that these tips and tricks that I've learned over the years will be very useful to you and you can learn something and improve your modeling. So the first tip is kind of obvious, but it's an important one. Uh, pick an airbrush you're going to love. Uh, people are going to tell you, hey, get this brand, get this brand, get this brand, etc. But really pick it up, feel it, see what you think of it. So these three are my favorite personally, yet other people prefer different airbrushes that I am not a fan of. Um, so here's my Iwata. I absolutely hate it. I, I, June, I don't like it. I'm not saying it's a bad airbrush, I just don't like the feel. Same with this GSI Krios, which is a top-notch airbrush. I just don't like it. It doesn't feel well in my hand, it doesn't handle well, I just don't like it at all. Yet I love my Badgers and I love my Harder Steinbeck. So really the first tip is get one that you're going to love. You know, put it in your hand, feel it, and that will help you determine if it's the right airbrush for you. So the first technique that I want to demonstrate that um, a lot of people ask me about is how to properly thin paint. And really properly thin paint you should mix it outside of the airbrush in a cup uh, precisely controlled so you can get the best results. So as you notice here I'm adding in several drops of paint and I'm going to add an equal amount of thinner. And that's, I always start with a base level. And my base level is always 50% paint, 50% thinner at 20 PSI with a small needle nozzle setup, usually a 0.2 or 0.3. I like to go small because I have better control and it allows me to get the atomization better and that just results in a better airbrush uh, outcome. So as you can see, I mix the paint and now I'm flowing it up against the wall. And I'm making sure that it flows down, but it sticks to the wall. And that's how I know that the paint is ready to go. And I think a lot of modelers really overcomplicate this. If you notice, I did this in just less than a minute and it's ready to go. And I'm pouring it straight into my cup. I don't need to strain it through a legging or whatever. I mean, most modern paints are really, really well made so that's no longer a problem back in the day maybe there were impurities but they're pretty damn good these days so i don't worry about that stuff so as you can see just straight into my cup and i'm airbrushing and you can see the lines i'm getting i am getting really fine really concise lines they're not grainy they're not uh super wet they are perfect they you cannot tell uh any of the over splatter, anything. It, they just look like perfect lines written by a pencil almost. And if I take off the tip of the airbrush, I can go in closer and get pencil thin lines. And once you figure out how to get fine lines, that's really the, the secret of airbrushing. The rest of it is pretty easy. So don't overcomplicate this. Start with a base point, you know, 50% paint, 50% thinner. You might have to adjust if your paint is too thin. You might have to add in more thinner or less, uh, add in more paint or lower the pressure, whatever it may be, but this is a starting point and you, you should go from there. And it's not that hard, guys. It's really not. I don't know why people overcomplicate airbrushing for some reason. Uh, back flushing. This one is a controversial thing in the modeling community for some reason. Don't know why. I think a lot of modelers are convinced that if you back flush, uh, it will ruin your airbrush. And if you're using solvent paints, it will ruin your airbrush. I started off uh, airbrushing for companies repairing uh, pitchers. And we would use solvent paints. And we did back flush. Uh, the thing about back flushing is it saves time. And when you know you're being paid 
uh, per piece well that time is kind of essence right so I'm used to back flushing I'm very familiar with back flushing but it does destroy your airbrush if you use solvent paints however it does not do anything if you use acrylic paints acrylic paints don't have any harsh chemicals in them it's just water uh, so it will not destroy your airbrush but it's an easy method you mix in your thinner and your paint together in the cup you use something to block the airflow so the paint the air goes back into the cup and mixes the paint and you look for those bubbles did you see the chocolatey type of bubbles where they're flying almost out of the cup because they're so thin that tells me it's ready to go and the paint is mixed perfectly and I'm gonna get great atomization And as you can see I'm getting really good results the paint is coming out really beautifully I'm getting great lines when I take off the tip I'm gonna get really fine lines so back flushing works and I really like it this is how I airbrush and this is how I've been airbrushing for almost 25 30 years now uh, there's no issue with it if you're using acrylics and eventually if you use solvents again it, it will break your seals inside your airbrush so just be aware of that especially if you have a harder Steinbeck which has plastic seals but for the most part not really an issue for modeling community for the airbrush community for the professional airbrush artists it is an issue we did have to repair brushes all the time because of this but it saves time and it's such an easy thing to do and look I'm just getting good results so this is a very, very easy method to do. Again, I'm starting with 50% paint, 50% thinner at 20 PSI. How to change your paint quickly so as you can see there's some paint left over in the airbrush cup i'm adding some cleaner i'm going to brush as much of it out as possible i'm not going to it, blow it out through my airbrush i'm going to get rid of as much as i can into the container and whatever's remaining i will brush uh, airbrush out i don't you don't want all of that dirty paint going through your airbrush and then what i'm going to do is add in some more and use the back flush technique to kind of clean and loosen some of the paint that's remaining in there. And I'll do this once or twice, depending. I'll blow out the rest into the uh, cleaning station there. Again, I'm gonna add in a little bit more. Back flush. Throw out as much as possible, and as you can see, I've already cleaned the airbrush and it's coming out clear. Blow out the rest into the cleaning station. And now I'm going to add in my next paint. And I'm just going to do the back flushing method also to mix my paint here so I can do my color changes really, really quickly. I'm just using the stirring stick just to kind of get it started. And again, I'm going to just use the back flush tool from Hyder Steinbeck and start airbrushing. And I've done my color change. If you take out all the frivolous stuff, I've pretty much done my color change in about 30 seconds. And I'm ready to go on to my next color in my camo scheme or whatever it may be. So this is really not that hard to do color changes. Just don't blow everything out of your airbrush. Get as much of it out into a container. Only airbrush out whatever paint that it cannot be thrown into the container. There you go. Simple as that.
Okay, so how to clean your airbrush to put it away. This is different than um, changing paint colors and also it's different from deep cleaning. Deep cleaning is something you should probably do once a month uh, on average. Um, a lot of modelers, we don't airbrush that often. I mean, when I was doing airbrushing professionally, we cleaned out our airbrushes almost daily because we're going through hours and hours of painting. But most modelers do one model a month at max, so it's, it's really not that big of an issue to deep clean. So once a month on deep cleaning, you should be fine. But to put it away, uh, for the next use, here's what you want to do. You want to take out as much paint as possible and dump it out. Don't blow it out, dump it out. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to try to loosen as much paint that's in the needle nozzle area. And I'm going to use the back flushing technique to loosen that up. And here's where it's a little bit different. So when you press down, you're going to get air. But when you pull the uh, needle chuck back and you press down, the needle isn't in the way anymore, so it blasts out the paint and the air together, loosening all of the paint that's stuck in the needle nozzle area. And that's really where the biggest problem with airbrush cleaning is, the paint that's stuck in the needle nozzle area. So as you can see, I'm pulling back, I'm pressing down, and I'm trying to loosen as much paint in that and clean it out. And then I'm going to go back and forth, press down and back, just to you know blast out as much. But when the needle isn't in the way, you, you really help loosen the paint that's stuck there and this is where a lot of the problems emerge this is where people they'll find their airbrush is stuck the next day because that paint has re-dried and the needle is now stuck so you want to blow out as much of that paint in that area as possible so you're going to probably have to do this a couple times so in this case I'm doing it about three times here trying to blast that paint out and you want to use high air pressure, by the way. I'm actually at 40 PSI doing this to blow out as much of the dried paint, as much of the paint that's in the needle nozzle area. Again, back flushing helps loosen it. And then pull the chuck, press down, let the air and the cleaning solution blast out, and let that paint blow out of the airbrush. And then just take out the remaining. I'm going to test to make sure that everything is clean by testing it on the air uh, paper here and make sure it comes out clear. So it gives me a good indication if you're seeing paint still that you need to add in more cleaning solution. So uh, now I'm going to talk about how to deep clean your airbrush and you need a couple things to deep clean your um, airbrush um, and they're not really complicated things they're just simple things you need a brush you need a, a, a needle cleaner uh, you need needle juice and some dental dam cleaners um, very useful um, and I'm demonstrating on this Badger Patriot because it's a little complicated to clean versus other airbrushes. So the Badger has a ball at the end of the needle, so you cannot push the needle forward and take it out from the front. You have to take it out from the back, which drags some of the paint into the body. So how I recommend cleaning this in particular is removing the nozzle setup in front. and then pushing the needle forward first as much as you can and cleaning as much of the needle as possible while it's sticking out from the front just be careful not to drop it here clean out the cup as well because some of the the paint will come into the cup when you do this take out the handle in the back and press the needle forward now you can see all of that gunk that collects up in the back and goes towards the body. So I'm going to try to remove as much of that as possible before I take out the needle from the back. And this is one thing I really don't like about Badger. I wish they didn't do this because it's easier to remove the needle from the front and not drag everything into the cavity of the airbrush. 
So, start removing all the pieces, and you're going to need a little container, by the way, because all of these pieces will roll around, so it's better to put them in on a plate or a container of some kind so you don't lose everything. So, I'm disassembling the airbrush, and I'm going to take everything out, put it in the container, and this is where really the cleaning begins. I prefer not to use really harsh chemicals for my um, airbrushes um, when I'm cleaning them. Um, this is simply green uh, and it does the job for the most part. I'm going to let the uh, nozzle there soak and in the meantime I'm going to use it to clean out as much of the cup and the body as I can. Now there may be cases, especially if you have an airbrush that has dry paint, it's been sitting for weeks or months or whatever it may be. Um, you might need to use lacquer thinner and lacquer thinner is very harsh so just be very careful with that but most of the time I find that I can get everything done with just simply green um, so as you notice here I'm taking the dental picks uh, the dental dams however you want to call them and I'm trying to take out as much of the paint as you can see there's paint there uh, and this really helps remove a lot of it you're going to go through a lot of these, so it's good to have a <laughs> extra supply available. But this really helps clean the cavity of the airbrush as much as possible. Now, as I mentioned, one thing I hate about Badger is you have to take the needle out from the back instead of the front. And that means a lot of paint uh, and primer, whatever you've been blowing into that airbrush, gets kind of sucked into the body. So you'll notice when I clean from this side there's a little bit more paint residue gunk built up so this is why it is important to clean your airbrush once a month if you've been using it actively um, again most modelers do one to two models so you shouldn't have to clean more than once a month but try to do it once a month just to keep the airbrush healthy so as you can see I'm removing quite a bit of gunk from the back rather than the front because of the design I really wish Badger would change this. I really do. I don't like having to pull the needle out from the back. Always push it out from the front. That way the paint doesn't get into the cavity. And I, I don't know why they did that. Um, but yeah. But I love the airbrush altogether. I, I love how it handles and performs. So I do like that part. And I'm going to use the paintbrush here to remove as much of the dried paint that's gotten to the sides of the wall here. Okay, so time to reassemble now that I've done some cleaning. Keep in mind with the chuck here, it lines up. So make sure it lines up and, and moves freely or what's gonna happen is it's gonna get stuck. Use the needle, uh, or I'm sorry, the chuck uh, bearing there to tighten it into place so you can easily screw it back. But it does pop out, so be careful that it lines up and it pulls back. The key thing I want you to learn here is whenever you reassemble your airbrush, always, always, always use lubricant. Um, this really is the magic or the, the key secret of airbrush cleaning. You really need to use lubricant because it helps the treads, everything. Every time you unscrew your airbrush, you're ruining the threads. And this really keeps everything nice, smooth, moving, flowing etc so always 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 use uh, needle juice and that badger needle juice that you see I've owned that for oh god probably 15 years now so it goes a little goes a long long way but it's absolutely necessary to keep your airbrushes healthy for the long term so get yourself um, some needle juice uh, lubricant and uh, use that every time you disassemble your airbrush even if you're not cleaning your airbrush and you disassemble it I don't know for fun use needle lubricant it's it's magic and I use it on every part of the airbrush when I'm basically screwing it in so I'm gonna use it on the needle I put some in you know on the threads uh, everywhere pretty much so this really really helps so when you're putting the needle back in you don't want to shove the needle back in. You want to press it back in gently 
and then once you feel no resistance just gently tap and then lock it into place because the tip is really delicate and if you press too hard you're going to break the tip so you don't want to do that so be gentle when you do this process it's pretty simple but those are delicate parts and there you go